what I thought we'd do is, uh, as Jack said, uh, a brief run through for about 15, 20 minutes uh, on uh, where I see the current state of Russian and Chinese uh, IADS capabilities, uh, some of the core systems uh, that make those up, um, some of the interesting ways that they're being uh, networked together and used, uh, and then uh, hopefully leave a decent amount of time for Q&A. Uh, so do be please uh, thinking of questions. Uh, so starting off uh, with the blindingly obvious, the elephant in the room, uh, hopefully you can all see the slides. Uh, the Russian S-400 system poster child for A2AD. Um, the point uh, that I'd like to emphasize up front, again, apologies for uh, those who, uh, for whom I'm kind of teaching grandmother to suck eggs who are well aware of this stuff, but uh, worth stating for those who might not be. The S-400 system, like most double digit SAMs, is uh, a highly modular system which consists of a number of components. It's not just a basic fire control radar and some surface to air missile launchers. Um, so the basic uh, kind of battery composition um, with the uh, transporter erector launchers, uh, the fire control radar for engagements and the uh, 96L6E uh, wide area target acquisition radar um, is complemented by uh, various radar feeds uh, including exotic things like the NABO M, uh, which is a multi static um, meter and decimeter um, and uh, sort of radar complex designed to uh, incorporate input from multiple different sources uh, in multiple different frequency bands in multiple different places, uh, with a particular emphasis on trying to uh, sort of join the ghost uh, dots, as it were, to, to get a better chance of tracking stealth aircraft. Um, things like the Protivnik, uh, the decimeter band target acquisition radar, again, a different uh, from the Russians in recent years trying to do a similar thing, unmask uh, stealth aircraft. Uh, and the key being that uh, in the case of the SA-21, the S-400, um, the uh, 54K-6 uh, E-2 command post uh, draws together all of the different radar feeds and pushes those out to the, the batteries um, within each complex. Um, the S-400 system and the S-300V4, so that'd be the SA-23, um, and the Chinese HQ-9, which we'll get onto, are all designed specifically to be modular, so that as new radar types, uh, new radar techniques, new radar iterations are developed, they can be easily uh, kind of incorporated into the broader uh, air defense uh, complex without requiring changes in particular to the, uh, the sort of core TELs and fire control radars. Um, so as uh, Russia and China continue to push uh, their, particularly their counter stealth uh, radar capabilities, um, the, the kind of IADS um, with the strategic SAMs at its center um, is well placed to integrate those new systems easily. Um, a word on the claimed 400 kilometer reach of both the S400 and the S300 V4. Uh, this relies on the 40N6 and the 9M82MD missile, uh, respectively. The 40N6 is for the S400, 9M82MD for the S300 V4. Uh, these are both produced by Amazanti, but by uh, different design teams working on different families uh, of SAMs. Um, the 40N6 is officially accepted for service uh, in October of 2018. Uh, it is claimed to have an active uh, radar seeker head. Um, it's large, expensive, uh, and relatively unproven. Um, definitely small numbers with only a thousand on order, uh, and it's unknown how many of those, at least in open source, have been delivered to frontline units. Um, the 9M82MD is much more uncertain. Um, it was claimed to be uh, in operation in May 2014. I think that's extremely unlikely, um, but it's certainly been in development uh, since 2010. Uh, and given the Russians seem to have got over a lot of the seeker head uh, and control regime difficulties with the 40N6 to get that into service, uh, and that even though they're two different design teams, the 9M82MD for the 300V4 is being developed also by Almazanti, uh, it's likely that there's a lot of technology sharing uh, and that uh, if the S300V4 does not have a 400 kilometer class SAM capability yet, uh, it will do in the reasonably uh, short term looking forward. Um, what's of course important to note about these sort of claimed 400 kilometer range SAMs, that 400 kilometer range would be against large, uh, relatively slow, non-maneuvering targets. Uh, so things like tankers, AWACS, uh, big wing ISR aircraft against fighter type targets uh, with, with the capacity to both uh, sense the potentially the missile launching coming 
um, certainly once the, the lock on comes and just they have a lot more kinetic energy so they can and an agility so they can uh, the, the sort of envelope um, that the missile has to stay within in order to intercept them is much harsher. Uh, that effective range would be far, far lower than 400 kilometers. Uh, Russia is in particular making a lot of attempts to incorporate some of its uh, over the horizon uh, static radar capabilities into the IADS more broadly. Um, so the latest Voronezh radar arrays, uh, the M, the DM, the VP, um, have all been theoretically at least incorporated into the broader IADS. Um, what these systems, uh, which are generally speaking optimized for um, strategic ballistic missile warning, uh, give to the um, air focused IADs, uh, so aerodynamic targets focused IADs, is an ability to know roughly when a strike package uh, is taking off and assembling almost anywhere, um, in, certainly in Europe. Um, and that applies whether those, uh, that strike package is composed of stealth fighters or traditional aircraft. Um, it gives nowhere near uh, sufficient accuracy for an actual target lock uh, or a, a sort of firing solution, but it gives a very, very useful queuing information on roughly when and where um, threats are likely to be coming in from. Uh, just a reminder, of course, again, that uh, you know, I singled out in particular in the Russian case, the S-400 and the S-300B4, um, but uh, a reminder that there is a whole host of um, S-300 family derivatives for the Russian Navy, Air Force, um, and uh, uh, Navy, Air Force, strategic rocket forces, etc. Um, so important to remember that uh, you know, Russia very seldom gets rid of old capabilities, um, old kit, they might mothball them, um, but the sort of stockpile of older systems, older missiles, all of which can be integrated uh, as sort of donor shooters or potentially radar sensors, into uh, the IADs in, uh, sort of uh, coordinated by the SA-21 and 23, uh, they represent an additional source of, of um, IADs. Uh, sorry, words failing me. Um, of IADs uh, resilience uh, and, and um, ability to, to uh, proliferate the number of targets that a sea admission would have to hit. So about that. Um, uh, just again to uh, illustrate for those who are not necessarily aware, um, roughly the number of vehicles that uh, uh, the IADS is composed of, the, well, in this case, the components of the IADS, uh, a single S300 or S400 battery, you're typically looking at around 12 tells, could be uh, about 8 to 12. Um, in the case of the S300B4, a mix of heavy and light tells. Um, so these systems carry uh, a variety of shorter range, medium range, and very long range missiles. In the case of the S-300 V4, at least, they're visually distinctive. Uh, there are the, the larger two cell tells for the uh, 9M82 series, the very long range SAMs, uh, and a single fire control radar. Um, the medium tells are TLARs, so they have uh, a target acquisition and fire control radar of limited capacity themselves. Um, so that if the basic fire control radar is taken out, uh, they can still be useful. Um, in, when you look up to a battalion, uh, you, this is the uh, level at which the target acquisition radars are being um, incorporated, um, along with command vehicles. Uh, so they're able to uh, obviously give a much better uh, situational awareness picture than a single battery, but also um, bring in a lot more uh, varied sensor data and coordinate the various shooters uh, more effectively with the command vehicle. Um, and a full brigade, uh, which is more of an administrative unit, um, but this is the level where you're, you're seeing inputs from things like NABO radar complexes, the Pollyanna high-level command vehicles, um, etc. Um, when you're looking at actual deployments, uh, typically Russian forces will deploy in regiments, which is half of a brigade in terms of numbers of TELs and TLARs. Um, Worth remembering, of course, that the strategic SAMs do not deploy alone. Um, they are supported by, protected by um, a series of medium range systems, most notably the SA-17 and SA-15, um, which are designed to move with and protect Russian uh, army formations, as well as uh, things like air bases. So uh, when these systems are linked up, uh, either via um, UHF or VHF, um, or potentially ground comm links uh, or other relay systems, 
to those strategic SAMs. Uh, they not only offer more shooters, uh, so those uh, the, the regimental commanders or uh, battalion commanders of SA-21 or SA-23 systems can uh, use up uh, SA-17 shots, for example, before they deplete their own um, uh, missile arsenal when they can. Um, but it also gives uh, far more sources of forward-based radar sensors, uh, in particular, the Book M2, so the latest version of the SA-17 has a fantastic radar um, for a, a vehicle its size. So when you're looking at the radar horizon of a strategic SAM, uh, if you're trying to get close to it, for example, by flying low, you not only have to look at where the uh, strategic SAM radars are based, but also where the furthest forward uh, linked up uh, SA-17 or 15 uh, is, and look at the radar horizon there. Uh, and of course, there's also point defenses, uh, such as the Tunguska and Pansir, which will both move with uh, Russian ground formations and also, uh, in the case of the Pansir, are uh, deployed at about two per battery in order to protect um, the strategic SAMs themselves. As the Syrians and the uh, uh, Israelis have shown repeatedly recently, um, these systems can be swamped, like any point defenses, and they only work if they are uh, work well if they are competently operated and uh, use appropriate TTPs. Uh, but when they are, uh, they further increase the number of simultaneous um, PGMs which are required to give a decent PK against um, strategic SAM systems. They also make it very, very lethal for low-flying aircraft going over Russian mobile formations um, if they were trying to, for example, terrain mask to get deep into the IADs. Uh, flying over anything equipped with Tunguska or Pansir is going to be very unpleasant for uh, a fast jet or a helicopter. Um, looking at Chinese systems, uh, the HQ-9, uh, along with the HQ-9B and uh, most recently C variants, uh, are derived from the older uh, S-300 PMU-2 system, uh, which, we use, which in NATO is called SA-20. Um, the rough summation of uh, the HQ-9's capabilities is significantly reduced range and kinematic qualities compared to the Russian uh, S-300 V4 and S-400 systems, but significantly better processing power, um, passive and active electronically scanned radar arrays, uh, and potential for cross-system integration, um, which at the moment is being held back by the uh, siloed nature of Chinese um, PLA, PLAN, and PLAF um, systems, which at the moment in terms of C2 and operational exercises tend not to talk to each other. Um, but China has significantly improved radar capabilities having stolen a great deal of tech from the West as well as having a much better domestic electronics uh, capacity than Russia. So if you look for example at the HT223 uh, fire control radar which um, is the basic unit for batteries of HQ9s, it's based on the flat lid tombstone series of Russian fire control radars but is significantly better shaped, has significantly higher processing power, went fully digital much earlier, and is just generally a better um, example of how to do uh, a fire control radar in that way. Um, so the Chinese are still behind on missile kinematics, still importing the S-400 system uh, for that reason, but in terms of uh, radar, very much uh, up there with the Russians and uh, surpassing them in some cases. Uh, and like the S400 and S300 V4, the HQ9 is designed to be modular so it can take um, and donate uh, situational awareness and uh, shooter assets uh, in exchange with things like the HQ12 uh, or SA17 imports. Um, the HQ9C and the S400 uh, are both claimed to have active seeker SAMs as well as potentially the S300 V4 um, when the 9M82MD comes online. It's important uh, to note that this has a potentially very significant effect if the Russians and Chinese can get their active seekers working on the ability to get close to IADS components by flying low. Um, in, in effect, because it allows potentially reasonably limited PK, but potentially successful um, interceptions to be made against targets which are outside of the radar coverage of the launch battery. Um, which up until, if, if limited by uh, semi-active or command link guidance, uh, is impossible. Um, but when you're looking at uh, the latest Russian uh, IADS capabilities and Chinese, potentially Chinese capabilities, and certainly where they are going over the next five to ten years, uh, the incorporation of active seekers in a reasonably large way 
uh, I think is something that anybody planning to fly low um, into uh, these sort of systems needs to look very closely at. Um, it's also worth noting that the 40N6 and the 9M82 uh, MD both use a very, very high quasi-ballistic um, uh, loft profile for very long range shots, those 400 kilometer class shots, uh, particularly ironically enough, if they are against shorter range targets, say 150 to 200 kilometers, um, much like a ballistic missile, uh, if you want to uh, shorten the range, one of the ways of doing that is actually increasing the apex. Uh, and what that means is with a relatively uh, conservative estimate of a 60 degree um, search cone, uh, this is very basic maths. And of course, the, the actual terminal dive would not be um, vertical. Uh, it would be slanted, although it's much steeper than older pattern cruise uh, type missiles. Um, if you assume 100,000 feet uh, roughly is where the seeker goes active, uh, that would give you about uh, just shy of a thousand uh, kilometers cubed of uh, airspace at ground level that that seeker could theoretically scan. Um, that's purely for illustrative purposes, but it's to give you an idea of the level of precision um, or rather the lack of precision required uh, in terms of target uh, track data to theoretically get one of these missiles or several of these missiles uh, in operational terms. Um, they would be fired in multiples um, to a position where they could intercept uh, low flying strike packages and the like. Also worth remembering that uh, low observable aircraft are seldom optimized for uh, RCS from viewed from above. Um, there's also, of course, a lot of electronic warfare equipment, particularly on the Russian side, but the Chinese uh, are both importing some Russian stuff and developing their own. Um, things like the Krajuka 4, which are designed to mess around with long range uh, AWACS, uh, Joint Stars type surveillance, as well as SATCOMs and GPS. Uh, the Zhitel system, which is designed to uh, disrupt radio, radio, uh, sorry, radio proximity fuses. Um, the point about the electronic warfare as an IADS component, I think, is just uh, where things are marginal in terms of a SIAD or an interdiction mission within range of uh, Russian or Chinese IADS components. It's worth remembering that uh, friendly sensors and weapons performance is likely to be significantly degraded below peacetime um, levels because of this sort of electronic warfare capability. Um, so again, adds to the challenge. Uh, there's also an overhead uh, surveillance uh, component to the IADS. Uh, Russia has modernized uh, 26 of its uh, A50s um, with uh, digitized avionics, um, more data link capabilities, but they're still relying on MechScan radars, so limited performance against uh, A, very large numbers of targets, and B, low RCS uh, targets like uh, modern cruise missiles or stealth aircraft. Um, the A100, uh, which will uh, theoretically start replacing the A50s uh, in the early 2020s, um, is coming along. It finally does have a hybrid AESA rotating array. Um, but uh, again, as with all Russian electronics, um, take with a pinch of salt until it's proven to work. Um, but the point being, they're still investing in it, uh, and they are prioritizing the ability to data link overhead surveillance data down to the IADs to further decrease um, the ability to get close to those strategic SAM systems by flying low, uh, and of course improve the multi-static uh, anti-stealth capabilities. Uh, the Chinese uh, have at least three kinds of AWACS in service, KJ-2000 being the biggest and most recognizable. Uh, they also have the KJ-200, which is uh, again uses the same non-rotating AESA as the 2000 uh, on a turboprop body, um, and the KJ-500, which uses uh, an REI type uh, um, bar AESA on the top. Um, they have fully digital mission systems uh, and are much closer uh, in technical capability to what the West might term a modern AWACS than the older Russian A50s. Um, but again, the lack of jointness between uh, different elements of the PLAAF in particular um, and the way that they operate. So at the moment, um, the way that these are operated by the PLAF is that uh, the traditional uh, air brigade commanders who used to sit and dictate operations play by play uh, from the control tower on the airfield have been moved to the AWACS. Um, they're not battle space managers in the same way as we would think. Um, China, I would say, has the components in place uh, for quite an effective overhead surveillance capability, but uh, still has real problems with joint engagement zones uh, and 
uh, has a lot of catching up to do in terms of uh, TTPs. They are also investing quite heavily in UAVs, uh, hail types in particular, um, when it comes to overhead surveillance. Uh, the Divine Eagle is sort of a uh, Global Hawk class in terms of takeoff weight, twin boom, uh, twin fuselage uh, type UAV. Uh, it's the first one we've seen which has the uh, takeoff weight and lift capacity to uh, carry a really large wide area AEW array if they wanted to. Um, and certainly it's been touted in Chinese circles uh, as a counter stealth uh, system to be used with overhead high altitude multi-static um, uh, employment uh, with a sort of model with ground based uh, PED. Um, I think at the moment, given what, we, what has just been said about their uh, joint engagement zone and more generally kind of quite rigid operational uh, models limitations, uh, I think it's a future threat rather than a present one. Um, but I think China has the uh, future capability to make things really quite difficult for low observable targets, uh, as well as low flying targets within a thousand nautical miles of the mainland. Um, of course, the Russians also have the A31 um, still being modernized in the BM uh, form. Uh, it's an old system, but uh, it also has huge radar uh, power um, in terms of a fighter type array. Um, very, very good burn through performance against DW and uh, modernized finally uh, R-73 missiles uh, to go uh, along with it so that it could theoretically contribute uh, uh, fires in addition to SA to the IADS as a whole. Uh, it's more of a unique irritation, I think, than a core feature. Um, but it is worth uh, noting that the Russians are looking to kind of use them as what they call air airspace quarterbacks um, to uh, push the situational awareness that a four ship can create down to the IADS. They're working on the data links. Um, but again, uh, Russian electronics, they're having difficulties. Uh, so uh, that's a quick canter through, trying to keep it short um, and looking forward to uh, the discussion in Q&A.